John, you want to throw a little bit? Tossing a Frisbee in the driveway with her 14-year-old son should be a cinch for Libby Ingram. A six foot, one inch tall, former all SEC college volleyball star. Her hand-eye coordination was keen until now. I started feeling badly probably about two or three months ago. And then about a month and a half ago, two months ago, I started having numbness down my left side. It's like at the base, it just feels really tight and full. Um, I get double vision, and I just get these feelings of feeling very um, panicked, like just out of control, like I, things aren't right. Is it good, John? Yummy? Libby thought it was getting older. She thought it was stress. Do you want some more? Mom to twin 14-year-old boys, one who is non-speaking with autism. Ice cream is good. Libby's husband, Peter, was also diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. And that was one thing. That's too much for most people by any standard. Somebody wrote very. Full disclosure, Libby is one of my dearest friends. Give me a high five. That's why this outgoing, gregarious, optimistic woman allowed us to chronicle what happened to her. In the brain, there's kind of a, a sort of a set of rivers of, of, of brain fluid uh, that go through the center of the brain and then ultimately have to go out through a narrow corridor called the aqueduct of Sylvius. Um, and this corridor, all the fluid in the brain has to exit there and eventually get back out and get reabsorbed. If this aqueduct, this little river, gets blocked, um, even occasionally or partially, it can create some of these symptoms. Emory neurosurgeon Dr. John Willie diagnosed Libby with intermittent obstructive hydrocephalus, meaning her spinal fluid was being blocked from leaving her brain. What was blocking it? A cyst growing on her pineal gland. So there's a, a gland deep in the brain called the pineal gland. It sometimes develops cysts, called pineal cysts, and most of the time, they just are there and they don't cause problems. Most pineal cysts never need any sort of operation whatsoever. We just find them incidentally on MRI scans. In Libby's case in particular, she had a cyst, but it was sizable enough and it was sort of pointing down to where it was obstructing the flow uh, into the aqueduct. It was probably the size of my finger, the tip of my finger, which is not big, but in a very small area of the brain that, that was obstructive. The aqueduct that we're dealing with that can be blocked is literally just a millimeter wide. I'd known that I had this cyst in my head from years ago after a concussion, and it was large then, and they said, well, you still have enough room, so you should be okay, but let's just track it and follow it, and just life gets, kind of gets in the way. We tracked it for a couple of years, and then I hadn't really tracked it in a while. But every night would The be cyst was growing was bigger, sure. impeding Libby's use of one side of her body, giving her constant double vision, headaches, and sleep deprivation. Left untreated in severe cases, it could lead to coma or death. You know what mom's having tomorrow? John Paul and I use you a letter board to communicate, more? and um, we've been doing this now since he was eight. B, R, A, I, and brain, S, U, you're right, R, keep going, G, E, go to it, R, yeah, she's having brain surgery. I really feel like I will be fine. I feel like my doctor is amazing and I have a lot of faith that it's all going to be great. I have a lot of faith that Peter's going to be around for many years, so, um, you know, I'm probably, I'm an, op an optimist, as you well know. <laughs> so Libby, who takes care of everyone else in her life, had to put herself first. We arrive at the hospital before dawn. Mwah. Libby's family and her son, Thomas, keep her company before surgery. I hurt my knee. Yeah, how'd you hurt it? Um, um, it's fine. Um, we need to buy you some new shoes when I'm home. I'll hopefully be home this weekend. So the plan is to uh, shave a little patch of hair about this size. The little window through the skull is about this big. Okay. So smaller than a dime. All right. Um, and then we use navigation to create the, the ideal trajectory to get to exactly where we want to. So it's a, a pass through a little thin layer of cortex, the surface of the brain, okay. to get to that fluid space in the brain, the ventricle. Okay. And then everything from there is navigating through that fluid space with little tiny cameras, okay. um, flexible little 
tubes. It's like you have a river that's being dammed up, and so it's creating a lake. Okay. And that lake is what's causing the pressure. We're going to knock a hole in the beaver dam okay. to get rid of that obstruction. Okay. But we don't know if we'll, we've actually gotten rid of the beaver, and the beaver's not going to rebuild the dam. <laughs> right. So while we're going to alleviate that obstruction, we're also going to create a little bypass so the fluid can get out in case the beaver tries to rebuild it. <laughs> okay. Okay? Um, there's a high chance that the cyst comes back, which is why we have the backup plan of creating a bypass. I was talking to a friend who had something done with a cyst at one time, but his was in his pituitary. Mm -hmm. And he said they took some fat from mm -hmm. somewhere and plugged it in. Do you have to do that to me? Do you want me to? If you, it's right here. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, as much as that. you want. Yeah, yeah I'd be no, thrilled. No, That'd it's, be really. It's not that type of surgery. Yeah. <laughs> Love you. After goodbyes, Libby is wheeled to the OR. You see the cyst is right here. It's blocking the way. A small hole is drilled in Libby's skull to create a window, and then Dr. Willie passes a camera through a tube-like straw deep into her brain. What looks like a pulsating bubble is the cyst that has been blocking the flow of her cerebral spinal fluid. Dr. Willie uses a cauterizing tool to punch a hole in the cyst. We saw where the cyst was, made a little hole in the cyst, with the hole in the cyst, you can see the small tunnel where the fluid needs to exit and how the cyst had been blocking it. Dr. Willie uses a forceps-like device and then a neuroendoscopy balloon to make sure the cyst is widely open. After draining the cyst and removing part of the cyst wall, Dr. Willie does a ventriculostomy, basically creating a new small bypass so that if the cyst comes back, Libby's spinal fluid will have a way out. <laughs> 18 months later, a lot has changed. I feel great. I feel like a, the old me again. Peter is in remission. Life is busier than ever. But with her health restored, Libby is up to the daily challenge, whatever may come. <laughs>